Hey guys, Sock here from Sock e Tech, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about iOS 14 beta number two, which has been released to developers. After we look at the beta, we'll go over all the new features of iOS 14, and I'll let you know there is really exciting changes to iOS 14 that should make a lot of iPhone users happy. So if I go into my settings right now, and if I go into general and tap on software update, as you can see, iOS 14 developer beta 2 is now available uh, and the size is 831.5 megabytes. So let me download and install this and let's see what's in fact new. And I do want to let you know that the iOS 14 public beta is coming very soon, most likely in a few days. All right, so let me fast forward this and we're going to be right back to see if there's any new changes worth looking at. Meanwhile, if you're wondering, here is a list of all the iPhones that will be compatible with iOS 14. That is a large list. You can pause and see if your phone is on the list. All right, so as you can see, the phone is now up to date. Okay, when I go to settings now, and if I go to general, if I go to software update, it is now running iOS 14, of course, the beta too. And right off the bat, there's one new thing I noticed. So let me show you what that is. So when I press and hold the screen, and when I want to add a widget, now we have a brand new widget inside the actual list. And that's uh, this one, the files widget right over here. So when you tap this, you get a bunch of new options. So basically quickly access files you have recently opened. So you can have the large one or this one if you want. Let's try to add this on the screen. Click on done. And since I haven't used the files application recently, now it's going to show up here. But if I did, I would see files show up right here that I recently accessed that I can tap on those and that's going to launch those files. Now beyond this, I haven't really seen anything in the settings that looks uh, new, okay? Very minor stuff, but nothing major. But I will let you know, overall, with iOS 14 Beta 2, I just use it for 30 minutes continuously, and there's definitely some performance and stability improvements. As I scroll back and forth, now I'm seeing, look, there we go. The files did pop up here, so I can actually tap on these, and they'll launch the uh, corresponding applications for that widget. But going back to the stability, it now feels much more stable, uh, much more smooth as I operate it. Let me bring this down here, okay? I was having some trouble with the uh, the home app here, so let's see if, how that works. So let me turn on the uh, bedroom light. Much better, okay? So I was having some connection issues with the beta one. So on top of having stability improvements uh, and performance enhancements, we're also getting a lot of bug fixes. So apps that used to crash earlier are no longer crashing. The camera application, when I launch it and try to record a video, is in fact more stable. As I scroll back and forth, it's not choppy. It was a little bit choppy with beta one. Now it's a little bit less choppy, which I can sense as I use it. And of course, there's no question that security has been improved. But they, that's basically everything with the iOS beta 2. They did not submit a change log. Apple did not give gave us a lock for all the changes, but it's a large file. It was 800 plus megabytes. So you bet they did some updates, bug fixes and improvements. Anyway, now we're going to go to the second part of the video and we're just going to look at all the new features of iOS 14 for those of you guys that are actually wondering. So let's dive in. So let's dive in and take a look at all the new features that you get with iOS 14. Now the first feature is something you're staring at. As you can see, we now have home screen widgets. That's the weather application, that's the calendar application, and that's the stock application. Each one of them have their widgets and you can see the widgets on the actual screen. So let's play around with these and see what's happening. So when I swipe this over, on a side screen, I usually have all my widgets. They have all been reshaped and redesigned, so now they look cooler and also they're extremely data rich. So as you look at a widget, it'll give you information inside that widget in relation to that application, all right? Look at that, and if I swipe over with the weather widget, you see what's the weather, the forecast at the bottom with the calendar, you get information on your next appointment, and it also shows you the stocks that you're following uh, on your stocks application. So what I can do is I can press and hold anywhere on the screen, and I get the option to either edit the widget or edit the home screen. 
So let's tap on edit the home screen real quick, okay? And now we have a brand new interface at the bottom. I can tap on this. I can see all my home screens with all the apps on it. I can disable a home screen if I don't want to see that. And I can click on done. Now I'm going to have four of them. So this one, one of them has been hidden, okay? Again, tap on this anytime to access all your home screens and disable the one that you don't want to see. Now on top of that, let me just click done in a minute. I can also tap on plus here. It brings up my widgets window from where I can choose all these pre-existing widgets and just drag and drop them on the home screen. Just one example, let's just grab this one. So I can grab this and I can put it right here, okay? So that's great. And then I can click on done. Now one more thing, now one more thing I'm gonna show you guys, if I swipe over to the end home screen, I can swipe one more time and that's gonna bring up the app library. Now the app library automatically and intelligently organizes all my apps in these large, easy to access folders. And I can access any one of these applications by simply directly tapping on the actual application. So this folder here is the suggestions folder. It's gonna stay on the top. This one is the recently added applications. And again, the ones that you see that are full icons, I can just tap on them and it's gonna take me directly to that application. Uh, but if you see four tiny apps, that's a folder within a folder. So when I tap on this one, it's gonna expand that and then I can access applications from there, as you can see individually. So that's fantastic. Let me, let me go back out over here. All right. And again, these are all populated and created automatically. You don't have to do anything. Suggestions are based on what you use often. And these guys are just at the bottom after second row. What it does is it creates these folders and auto organizes them inside their own respective folders. So here's my creativity applications. Here's my productivity. Here's my social applications. Again, if I tap on one of these guys directly, it just launches the application. But if I tap on the smaller folders, uh, it's going to launch the folder for further applications. So that's fantastic. And you can go all the way down and you have a lot of these guys. Again, all this stuff is done automatically. So that's the app library that sits at the end of the home screen. Now, again, if I press and hold even over here, it brings up the editing options. I can remove applications, okay, as you can see. I can tap on plus to grab, to grab the widgets. Let's see. So I can tap on the music widget. It's going to expand with all the separate options. So I can have some like this. Let me just press and hold so I can grab it. I can put it right here. This is just fantastic. All right. Uh, for an iPhone, it's been a while, but they finally brought it over. And again, on the side screen, you have all these other widgets. So that's the widgets. And of course, if I don't want any of these, I can press and hold and just remove the uh, widget as I please. And of course, again, if I press and hold and edit the home screen, I can also move it as I please. All right, there we go. So let's keep it at the bottom. Looks like I can make folders of actual uh, widgets and I can swipe through the actual folder. So there's a lot of options. By the way, once I create this little uh, double widget area, uh, I can actually tap on edit the stack and it, can, it allows me to edit the stack, all right? Smart rotate can be disabled and all that good stuff. So that's that, let's move on and talk about other features as well, but that's a home screen. Now, let's say you, that you're inside an application and somebody actually calls you. Let me call myself from another phone. And I want you guys to take a look at what happens on the screen. You're in the app, you're studying something, somebody gives you a call, and now what's gonna happen is, instead of the whole phone, uh, the whole thing taking the whole phone, the phone application, it's on the top, I can actually swipe it away or take the call from here. So that's brand new. Let me call myself one more time here. All right, so let me kill the volume. And again, I can swipe it away or I can take the call from here or I can swipe it down and it's gonna expand. So that's just fantastic new little uh, features. Of course, we have these features on Android for, for a long time, but they're coming here now and that's always a good thing. So one more thing I'm gonna show you guys is the picture in picture view. We finally get this option in the iPhone. So let me go to Netflix here to demonstrate. Let's just play something here. Let's just play this one right over here, okay? So there's a video that's playing. If I swipe up, you now have the video on the actual screen. I can even resize it, put it on the top, and I can continue doing stuff on my screen and continue watching that uh, show right there. This is just fantastic. I can exit out, 
or I can go back to full screen view. And if I go out, I can also take this and put it to the side for a second. So let's say I'm about to do something important right here. Let's say I'm reading something. I can put that to the side. It's still playing on the side, but when I want to bring it back, I just bring it right back. I can continue reading and watch that if I so desire, or I can exit out and I'm done. And then what we have is we have the redesigned Siri. So let me just bring it up so you can see what it looks like now. So instead of filling the whole screen, when I press and hold, it shows up at the bottom. I'm talking to it, all right? I'm going to take it out. Let me ask you a question. Is it going to rain tomorrow in New York? It doesn't look like it's going to rain Look at tomorrow. the way it responds. It responds with a little information on the top, again, instead of filling the entire screen. So again, if I was reading something or doing something on any other app, I don't have to go out of that app. I can look at the app and I can just quickly ask a question. Define mobility. Mobility right. means... There we go. So I can use a dictionary that way. I don't have to exit the book or whatever I'm reading. I can just ask you to define a word uh, for me. Fantastic. Now let's talk about the actual messages. Uh, not a lot is going on here, but we do have a brand new option. What we have now is we have the pinned messages option. So let's say I want to pin a conversation to the top. All I do is press and hold, all right, and just pin to the top. Boom. It's going to appear on the top right here. So that's going to be my favorite people or an important conversation I'm having right now. If I want to unpin any conversation, press and hold, and I'm be able to unpin it, it goes away. Now on top of this, if I were to go in here uh, with the emojis or emojis, we have some new things happening. So let me just select an emoji. We have some new styles. So we have this guy right here, for example. Uh, let me see. This one right here, the one with the fist, that's a brand new option. So any face you pick is also going to give you that option. We have three of these guys somewhere. I'm not sure exactly which ones are new, but you do get three brand new emojis and memojis uh, on this. So we also have a brand new translate application. So let me just launch it up real quick. So it's right here uh, on the top. We have a target language. Okay. You pick the, um, I'm sorry, the source language, and then you pick the target language from here. And then basically you can either type something in, okay, I can uh, go in here, I can type something, hi, how are you? And I can say go, and that's going to translate from source to target. And then on top of that, I can actually talk into it. So if I press, hey, do you know where's the closest restaurant? It's going to translate from English to Spanish to the target language, and I can show this to the other person. And the other person can actually respond back to me. And by the way, I can tap on play. Hola, ¿sabes dónde está el restaurante más cercano? It will actually play the translation. To, so the other person doesn't have to even have to uh, read it. They can actually listen to it and respond back from here. And then they can reverse translate it to English for me. And I can understand what they said as an answer. And of course, we have a bunch of other enhancements as well. Hard to demonstrate, but you get updates to the map application. You get updates to the Safari application. Uh, you get updates to the weather application. You get updates uh, to the Apple CarPlay application and so much more with iOS 14. But the biggest thing really is the widgets and the customizable uh, home screen and also the uh, app libraries. This makes life really easy. Like I said, if you want, you can simply tap and hold. Uh, let me go over here, press and hold, tap on this, hide all these home screens. Okay. You have to have one enabled. So that's only one enabled. And now I can swipe over and I can go to my app library. Okay. And again, press and hold, press on plus, add any kind of widgets, expand widgets for further designs. Okay. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below and let me know. And for now, guys, have a fantastic day, all right? All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day. All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech online to get the latest updates as well. 
All right, have a fantastic day.